Just released in June of 2010, Happy Wheels has gone on to become one of the most popular and influential Flash games ever created. The platforming adventure-style game with comical ragdoll physics presented players with a unique gameplay experience that had quite a lot of shock and charm. And the ability for users to create and upload their own custom levels gave the game endless possibilities and replay value. By 2013, the game had absolutely taken YouTube by storm, with Let's Play videos uploaded by various gaming channels like PewDiePie and Jacksepticeye reaching upwards of tens of millions of views, driving immense traffic towards the game's hosting website, TotalJerkFace.com. Millions of casual players browsed the seemingly never-ending catalog of user-made levels to try them out, with dozens of levels eventually achieving tens of millions of plays, two of which even broke the mind-boggling 100 million barrier. Aside from the game's essentially endless amount of content, there was one mechanic that drove many people to find value in playing the same levels over and over again. Upon reaching the flag at the end of any given level, the game presents the user with the exact amount of time that it took to complete it. Moreover, the game gives users the ability to view a replay of their gameplay and even upload it to the game's servers for other people to view on the level's leaderboard. Speedrunning was essentially built into the DNA of Happy Wheels, and many people sought to refine their skills and optimize their gameplay with certain characters and levels to try and achieve the fastest times possible. Unfortunately, this system had a significant drawback. On any popular level, the top replays list is flooded with inaccurate replays that quickly desync when attempting to view them. Thanks to minute differences that exist with how different versions of the Web Adobe Flash Player plugin handle floating point values. When playing Happy Wheels, the game checks your operating system, browser, and bit classification of your computer, either 32 or 64, to see if a replay will likely play back properly on your machine. Unfortunately, with Happy Wheels being such an old game, and so many different hardware configurations existing, the in-game leaderboard system has become completely ineffective at properly archiving speedruns, and it is impossible to really tell if a replay has desynced because of some differing hardware, or because the game was tampered with using an external program like Cheat Engine. The problem was only made worse when the game was ported to JavaScript to keep it alive after the death of Flash on the web, as the slight alterations made to the game's physics make every single replay performed before 2021 inaccurate, as they were all performed on the Flash version of the game. Thankfully, a solution to this enormous problem was generated by an external leaderboard hosted on speedrun.com. For any featured level in the game found under the Play tab, people could submit a video recording of their own replay or live completion and have it be verified on a leaderboard where it could be properly preserved and where anybody could view the run as it was actually performed, regardless of what computer hardware they had. Additionally, leaderboards were hosted for all of the official levels in the mobile version of the game, where the only official form of in-game tracking came in the form of horribly inaccurate Game Center leaderboards on the iOS version that had no viewable replays, and where every level was flooded with hundreds of obviously cheated runs at the top. On some levels, there were certain time ceilings put in place that were intended to mitigate this. For example, any runs faster than 19 seconds in level 2-3 are unsubmittable, as the developers thought that getting a run faster than that was completely impossible. However, with speedrun skips, people were actually able to achieve times faster than this limit, turning the Game Center leaderboard into a ridiculous competition to see who could get the closest to that time without going under. While many of the times on the game's speedrun.com leaderboard are certainly impressive, with runners often pouring in hours upon hours of attempts into a single level that is often less than a minute long, usually to shave off mere frames at a time, there is one Happy Wheels speedrun that stands far above the rest for how insanely impressive it is, and how much time and dedication was spent to make it a reality. You see, if you travel to the full game section of the Happy Wheels leaderboard, you will find a few different categories that involve the completion of more than just one level at a time. Of these three main categories, one of them revolves around a certain version of the game that wasn't even hosted on the game's main website. A common tactic for Flash game developers to drive more traffic to their hosting website was to provide a version of the game that external websites were allowed to host. These versions allowed people to play just a portion of the game, with them being given a link to the game's main website if they wanted to experience the full thing. If you've seen some of the other videos on my channel, you are probably familiar with the 5king.com site-locked bonus levels in Redballs 1 and 2, this scheme involving a very similar philosophy. 
Another version of this tactic came in the form of allowing any website to actually host the full game, but it would display ads that would support the original developer, utilized by the later Red Ball game sponsored by Not Doppler. The Happy Wheels demo consists of nine different levels, each providing a unique sampling of what Happy Wheels has to offer. Some of these levels allow any of the characters to be selected for the completion, while others default to a specific character. As you may have guessed, the demo category requires every single level to be completed with one of the available characters. The levels can be completed in any order, and timing begins upon loading the first level and ends upon reaching the flag platform at the end of the last. While individual level speedruns of Happy Wheels challenge the player to try daring strategies hundreds, if not thousands of times until they finally succeed, the demo category instead challenged players to remain extremely consistent while completing each level back to back optimizing their movement over a span of several minutes, hopefully without ever dying or making any other large mistakes. Unlike the full game's all featured levels category that required more than 130 levels to be completed over the span of around four to six hours, the length of the demo seemed just right for allowing players to truly optimize a multi-level category without being overwhelmed by the sheer quantity of levels. The first submitted demo speedrun was performed by a runner named Albigu, with a time clocking in at 5.23. He starts out with Obstacle Course as his first level, possibly since it was the most inconsistent, and he chooses the wheelchair guy as his character as his rocket booster makes him the fastest choice for this level. Irresponsible Dad does have an exploit where tons of speed and height can be generated by matching the shit out of the left and right buttons, but Wheelchair Guy is still generally the more optimal selection. Albigu performs a small skip in this level where this intended bounce platform is completely avoided thanks to Wheelchair Guy's rocket booster. Albigu performs quick menuing to the next level since it is counted in the final time of the run, and he picks the Wheelchair Guy again for his completion of A Large Satan Eats You. Kind of an odd level concept, but I guess that's what happens when you give people an expansive built-in level editor with seemingly infinite possibilities. Next up is BMX Park 2, where the irresponsible dad must be used, and following this is a level called Snowy Mountain Final, where a dismounted Segway guy has to hitch a ride on some kind of zipline system to reach one of the level's seven ending platforms. Albigu decides to choose the fourth fastest but second safest route, which involves staying on the zipline for around a minute and a half before dropping down to the finish at the very right side of the screen. Subsequently, Dawn of the Dead Level 1 requires the Segway guy to escape a zombie apocalypse through a few buildings and to hitch a ride on a rope hanging from a helicopter for around 25 seconds, where the ending platform can eventually be dropped onto. Next up, Albigu goes for Trap Track, an obstacle course style level that requires quite a bit of precise movement to avoid dying. Unfortunately, he clipped through one of the springy platforms at the very end of the level, forcing him to start it all over again, costing quite a bit of time. He then moves on to It Keeps Happening, a level where a true speedrunning skip can finally be observed. Normally, the player is supposed to carefully ride down a set of stairs before they are met with a large boost ramp that potentially launches them back to the elevated ending platform near the start of the level, something that is intended to be very inconsistent. However, by leaning back on the wheelchair guy, Albigu is able to fly into the air and completely cheese the level, completing it in 7.46 seconds. Finally, there's Rope Swings, a fairly challenging and inconsistent level where the player is intended to dismount the Segway and use the game's crawling mechanics to complete the level. However, Albigu instead backs up, waiting for the rope to swing forward, and he makes a jump that lands on the booster. But he unfortunately botches the later dismount from the Segway. Thankfully, on his second try, he hits the booster and successfully dismounts the Segway at just the right time to fly over the second rope, allowing him to reach the end of the level. But hold on a second, if you look at Albigu's splits, you'll notice that he only completed 8 out of the 9 demo levels. Which level did he leave out, and why? Well, Gutbus Extreme is a level that was very unfavored by Albigu when he originally pitched the idea for the demo category. You see, the player is supposed to enter the yellow bus by dismounting their vehicle, where they are then tossed around by quite a few obstacles, usually leading to the character dying or the bus stopping far before the finish. Since there was seemingly no way to control the bus, Albigu thought that this complete RNG fest of a level would probably be unfit for the category. He also didn't want it included because it would make a sub-5 time in the category more attainable, which is certainly an interesting rationale. 
Furthermore, when the category was initially added, a miscommunication led to Gutbus Extreme being excluded on the basis that it was impossible to complete. However, this was obviously not the case, and in December of that year, a runner named Dre would complete a demo run that did include Gutbus Extreme with him utilizing an inventive strategy that made the level far quicker, more consistent, and more skill-dependent. In his first PB of 538, Dre successfully completed Gutbus Extreme by exiting the starting container with Wheelchair Guy by using a precise rocket boost. It does seem like it would be impossible to fit through this gap, as the character's wheelchair is much wider than the available space. However, by using the rocket, the rotational velocity of the back wheel increases considerably, and when it hits the back wall, the rotation causes it to compress into the wheelchair, allowing the character to barely squeeze through. He flew through the air to the ending section of the level and reached the flag in under 30 seconds. With this, a category split was made to house both full and no gut bus extreme speedruns of the Happy Wheels demo. However, the latter subcategory was eventually axed as there became less and less of a reason for it to exist, wiping Albagu's PBs and a few others from the leaderboards. It is also worth mentioning that, in his run, Dre took a faster but riskier path through the snowy mountain level that saved over 30 seconds, where he rode a sled back down the mountain to reach one of the other ending platforms. Additionally, Dre incorporated a new strategy in rope swings where he landed on the spiky bottom of the level without getting stuck made possible thanks to him hitting the jump button just before hitting the ground. He then promptly jumped again and dismounted, reaching the ending platform from below. He also made a small adjustment in It Keeps Happening! Okay, I'm gonna stop doing that. Where he angled the rocket booster on Wheelchair Guy before boosting up instead of tilting the entire character backwards. It would take an entire year for Dre to return back to the category, but he came back with an absolute bombshell, a PB of 457, the first sub-5 in the category's history. In the entire run, he only really made three notable mistakes, those being a reset in Gut Bus Extreme and two quick resets in Rope Swings, costing maybe 15 seconds total. There was seemingly still a bit more room for the category to grow, and Dre's run description read, First sub five, but remember, I'll be back. He was certainly right. The very next day, Dre achieved a 441. His BMX Park 2 was way cleaner, and the character's body seemingly exploding right before the end actually ended up working towards his advantage. Aside from two quick resets in Gut Bus Extreme, this run was extremely solid, with his movement just becoming cleaner and cleaner. The description of this one read, Luckiest run ever. Cut 10 seconds, but you know, I'll be back. Well, there it is again. Dre would be back, but how much further could he really go? By refining his movement and implementing a new menuing strategy where he would press the escape button twice to skip the end panel rising animation after each level, saving around 10 seconds across the run, Dre had nearly achieved the first ever sub-4 on the Happy Wheels demo. It is worth mentioning that, during Dre's conquest, a runner named Ninjas for the Win 64 was briefly displayed at first place on the leaderboard with a time of 413, since Dre didn't end up submitting this run until later. While Dre had managed to maintain his status as the record holder for quite a long time, it certainly wasn't without some competition, something that he would later be reminded of. Just a week later, Dre uploaded a run that started like this. A floor clip to the ending platform in Trap Track that saved around 25 seconds, a strategy that opened the door to a sub-330 possibly being achieved in the category. The explosion from the mine gave the Segway guy just enough speed to barely interact with the ending platform's hitbox before dying. This strategy had been known all the way back when Albigu first started playing the category, with it having been utilized by quite a few individual level speedrunners, but its sheer difficulty and inconsistency prevented it from being used in demo speedruns. Until now. 
By starting with Trap Track, Dre was able to get what was by far the most inconsistent level out of the way first, and he ended up finishing with a 344, the first sub 4 in the category's history. Yeah, I'm done with demo for a while. I don't know if I can beat this. This is gonna be beaten soon, hopefully. Dre had implemented a strategy in Snowy Mountain where he descended in crawl mode instead of riding the zipline to the sled, saving around 9 seconds with optimal movement, unlocking even more potential in the category. Unfortunately, it would take Dre around 4 months to beat his run. Thankfully, it would be quite the comeback. The man had done it, sub 330. No deaths and no resets. In Trap Track, Dre was assisted by a more consistent setup that he developed for the mine skip, which did not require him to jump to hit the mine. While going up the ramp, he would hold up, left, and control to stay in a crouched position, allowing him to preserve most of his speed. Right before reaching the top of the ramp, Dre leaned forward, ejected from the Segway, grabbed the wall behind the mine, and then let go to land on it. Dre commented, I've spent the last two and a half years grinding this game. About six months ago, I told myself I would get a sub 330 if it was the last thing I did. He seemed to be quite content with the run that he achieved, moving on from demo speedruns while sitting atop the leaderboard by 44 seconds. This run was extremely impressive and truly seemed to be the pinnacle of Happy Wheel speedrunning, but was it truly the greatest run that this video seeks to highlight? Not even close. Dre truly did leave the category alone for almost an entire year. However, he would have quite the rude awakening on June 22, 2020, as a runner named Adam V247 set a personal best of 355, and two days later, a world record of 325. Adam was quite the experienced Happy Wheels player, holding the individual level world record in multiple of the demo levels prior to tackling the entire category. In his 325, his Snowy Mountain completion was 10 seconds faster than it was in Dre's record, thanks to a much more optimal kickback from the boosters and by completely avoiding all of the holes in the ground, which is what QWERTY had managed to do in their slightly faster individual level world record. Dre may have been done with demo runs back in 2019, but with his record being taken, he knew that he had to return. In October of 2020, he snapped back with a 312. To match Adam's gameplay in Snowy Mountain, he decided to actually start with that level instead of Trap Track. This was more risky, since Trap Track was still wildly inconsistent, but his 34 second completion of Snowy Mountain, 15 seconds faster than his previous PB, really spoke for itself. The only really noticeable issue with the run was that he had some unoptimal movement in Dawn of the Dead, due to him being unprepared to play it after accidentally selecting the level out of order. However, he remarked in the description that about 4 seconds were lost between BMX Park 2 and Satan, and that Trap Track and Gutbus Extreme each had around a second of time save as well. With better menuing and gameplay, he knew that a sub-3 demo run was possible, and he was going to go for it. A month later, he shaved just a second off his PB with a 311. This shouldn't be here for a while. Sub-3, please don't take too long. Another year passed, and nothing. It seems like Sub-3 was just too much to achieve. However, behind the scenes, Dre was not down for the count. He was still grinding the category, periodically playing the game in hopes that he would finally reach the milestone. And in December of 2021, the bombshell finally dropped.
2.59. On Christmas Eve, Dre had finally broken the final minute barrier in Demo Any% percent at the tail end of an over 8 hour long attempt session. His last Hail Mary to achieve the milestone before 2022 thanks to an upcoming vacation. The dedication was just astonishing. He had been working towards this goal for years and years, and it had actually just happened. He had truly become the master of the snowy mountain cha-cha, as he completed the level in just around 30 seconds. However, in true Dre fashion, he wasn't yet satisfied with the run, especially because of the extremely dumb death that he had at the start of Dawn of the Dead. Now that he had broken the immense mental barrier standing in his path, he was ready to apply his true potential in the category, hoping to achieve a sub-250. Once again, he was back to the grind. Two months later, in February of 2022, he claimed a 251, a run that tragically had a failed starting room exit in Gutbus Extreme, costing around one and a half seconds. The same month, he was on a run that was already 3.4 seconds ahead out of Trap Track, and despite a slightly unoptimal Satan, he was easily on 24x pace if he got a first try Gutbus Extreme. He got it. And then... Grab your Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Do you see that glass on top of the helicopter? That's a freaking like 2% chance, dude. That saves a second and a half. Six seconds ahead. But how had Dre saved so much time on this level, and why exactly was he freaking out over a tiny piece of glass on the helicopter? In Dawn of the Dead, the helicopter that the player grabs onto is actually tied by an invisible rope to a frozen ball that is on a slightly downward sloping block. When any object, including the player, touches the helicopter, the ball unfreezes, allowing it to roll. What had happened in Dre's run was that a piece of glass from the window at the very start of the level had managed to fly and hit the helicopter after the explosion, causing it to start moving much sooner than intended. On the run of his life, Dre had just been handed a time save that had only happened to him around 10 to 15 times before in his thousands of attempts at playing the level. He nailed it keeps happening, but then... Oh my god, I choked. Two forty-nine. Oh my God! I lost three seconds and got a two forty-nine. A bit of a tragic end to an absolutely insane run, but he still got the first two four X, and that's where the story ends. He had finally achieved his goal. Oh come on! Do you seriously think that Dre would go out on a run that ended like that? Before doing more runs, Dre sought to find a setup for Dawn of the Dead that would allow the early helicopter activation to be based on his skill of performing a series of predetermined key presses rather than it relying on pure luck. In a deterministic game like Happy Wheels, if keys are pressed on the exact same frames as an earlier execution, it will always lead to the exact same result. The first setup that he found involved buffering up and the jump key before entering the level to cause a stationary jump, releasing jump in the air, and then releasing up after the explosion. However, because of the stationary jump, this setup was barely any faster. Next, he found a setup that involved buffering up before the level and then pressing shift on exactly the 21st frame after starting, removing the sizable time loss from the stationary jump. He started going for this setup in runs despite it being slightly slower than the lucky skip in his PB. However, a few dozen runs in, Dre would accidentally discover the definitive version of the early helicopter activation setup. I missed it. He pressed shift way too early on frame 18 instead of frame 21, leading him to believe that he had failed the strategy. But this ended up happening instead. It's a tight window. Okay, too bad. Okay, I'm sorry, what? The glass had reached the helicopter way sooner than it had on frame 21, activating it so early that he wasn't even able to reach it in time. If he was somehow able to reach the helicopter, the frame 18 setup would be half a second faster than the early activation in his PB, and one and a half seconds faster than the frame 21 setup. Thankfully, by incorporating some more optimal movement at the start of the level, he found that it was possible to not just reach the helicopter, but also to grab onto its tail, which saved an additional second. Despite having the new setup at his disposal, Trey's next PB wouldn't come so easy. Through his failed runs, he had an additional piece of motivation pushing him forward. 
The desire to beat the then standing world record in Red Ball of 248.194 by the entire country of Sweden. At least that's what speedrun.com may lead you to believe. Two months and more than 10,000 more attempts later, Dre was 1.7 seconds ahead going into Gutbus Extreme after hitting the frame 18 setup. Sadly, he failed the first try room exit in Gutbus Extreme. However, this time, he didn't mess up the menuing going into rope swings and scored himself a 246. Judging from the description, there was still some more room to go. The very same day, he was ahead going into Gutbus Extreme, but he unfortunately didn't save any time due to unoptimal gameplay in the level. He maintained the small lead and got a lower 246. Still not what he wanted. Thankfully, four days later, the stars would finally align. Finally over, dude. Dre's speedrun of the Happy Wheels demo in 2 minutes and 43 seconds is, without a doubt, the greatest Happy Wheels speedrun ever performed. The years of dedication and the tens of thousands of attempts that he poured in all culminated in a nearly flawless speedrun with essentially zero notable mistakes. Demo Any% percent was initially a category that challenged people to stay consistent instead of always attempting the craziest strategies in each level. But if you broke Dre's most recent world record up into nine different individual level speedruns, it would be extremely hard to convince people that the completions were actually all performed back to back under immense pressure. There is still a bit of room to push the run further, with a time in the 2-3x range certainly being attainable through movement optimization or the implementation of more risky strategies. For example, there is a strategy in Satan which Dreas hit in previous runs where he would simply not dismount from the wheelchair before entering the crusher, able to save up to 2 seconds. However, with second place sitting 42 seconds behind him in this 3 minute long category, there isn't really too much incentive for Dre to climb any further he finally got the run that he wanted. In Dre's own words, I'll return to this category when someone challenges the throne. However, it is currently a very, very tall throne. So do you know when you started playing Happy Wheels and whatnot? Most people who have heard of Happy Wheels probably started with the online game, but I never played the online game. I started playing demo in middle school with my friends in study hall because I did not want to do homework. Wow, so like how many years ago was that? seven or eight years that's crazy <laughs> yeah and i've played i've played it consistently the whole time i've probably taken a six month break at the longest i have three or four different documents where i've gone through and played every single level a uh, hundred times and i've done that three four times now just playing each level so i know that live split showed that you had roughly fourteen thousand attempts in the category when you got your 243 but i know that you only actually started using live split pretty recently so how many attempts total would you estimate that you actually have in the category attempts is really hard because this is probably the fastest resetting game on speeder.com Fourteen thousand resets i only started doing that whenever i started streaming and that was only five months ago maybe so if you multiply that times 16 over eight years yeah yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot. Probably over 100,000 attempts. No, no, absolutely over 100,000 attempts. If we're talking hours, I probably have somewhere between 2,000 and 2,500 hours in this game. Holy Only demo. Smokes. That's absolutely mind blowing. Holy smokes. Dre's unique dedication to Happy Wheels demo speedruns is unlike anything else that I have ever seen in speedrunning. The ability for someone to almost single-handedly push a category so far for so long with almost no attention being drawn to them is truly mind-blowing. Dre's story is truly the most genuine representation of speedrunning. Someone working towards a goal solely because they themselves want to achieve it, with them having zero motivation whatsoever by the reactions that other people will have to their accomplishment. 
Indeed, Dre's 243, the speedrun that he spent so much time and effort to achieve, currently sits on YouTube with just 46 views. So please, do yourself a favor and go watch Dre's full run, and if you have been inspired by his story, please consider dropping him a subscription as well. The paths that people walk in the speedrunning community are often extremely unique, and it's crazy to think that if it weren't for me randomly wanting to do Happy Wheels Mobile speedruns back in 2017, I probably would have never been able to witness this story and share it with you all. If you did end up enjoying this video, please also consider hitting the subscribe button below this video as there are still so many more stories to tell. However, if you are on mobile, don't accidentally miss and hit the save button or you might accidentally add one of my videos to your only public YouTube playlist for 9 months and counting. Anyways, just know that speedrunning at its core isn't about getting some kind of attention or respect for your accomplishments. The most genuine, fulfilling moments come when you set a goal for yourself and you do whatever it takes to achieve it. So pick up a controller or keyboard and start playing whatever you are passionate about. You never know where it might lead. Thank you all very much for watching. An enormous thank you goes out to Dre, Agle, AdamV247, Lupus, QWERTY, and Harris for all helping me out immensely with this project. If you are wanting to watch more scripted Happy Wheels content, Harris actually has an entire retrospective series over on his channel that covers various topics relating to glitches, in-game replays, and speedrunning, so I highly recommend checking those out. I hope that you all have a great rest of your day.